Ren. And Alan, talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Ren. And Alan, I've seen that. All right, and then so you have a YouTube channel, Ren's Reviews, right? Where you you mostly do video games. Yeah, primarily. And then, so I've seen a few of your videos. I saw the one on Kingsman, which I thought was great. Uh, Thank you. I was you watched the whole thing. Yeah, I uh, I was so disappointed in the movie, the second mm-hmm. one, because I loved the first one. I thought the first one yes, was great. Of course, the second one was such a disappointment, and I felt like your points on it were exactly how I was feeling when I was watching it. Well, that's good to hear. The comments tell me otherwise, but yeah, well, people are dumb. That's uh, it's that's true. my theory. <laughs> If I could sum up the golden circle in one word, it would be blasphemous. Yeah. It's really bad. Yeah. It, it's it, like it, it, they took the heart of the first one and like everything that they did from the first one that worked. And like, well, let's just do that again. Forgetting yeah. that the reason why it worked the first time was because it was so subversive of everything following that formula. I, I still struggle to wrap my head around what happened in the movie. Like the fact that Eggsy steps on a landmine, I, I can't fully comprehend <laughs> that at all. Like, yeah, I, it, it, it's it's hard to put to words. Um, but yeah, the one one point I wanted I, that I thought of when watching it was about Lancelot, Lancelot the girl. Yeah, that's she's her. she's definitely coming back in the third one if there's a third one. Absolutely. Yeah. There is a third one. It's been greenlit. Has they it? want The Rock to be the villain. Ooh, yep. that's, it's a, it's a bit much with The Rock at this point. I think he could pull off a good villain, but I don't know if The Rock would want to play a villain right now. Yeah. At this point, he's, he, uh, he might, I mean, he might work well in The Kingsman. Uh, I feel like the villains have always kind of been difficult to get past because they're very cartoony, even Samuel L. Jackson. Was kind of yeah. a distraction, especially his lisp. Um, I loved that. <laughs> it, it was it was very distracting to me. But uh, anyways, uh, we're here to talk about Death Wish, not Kingsman. Yes, uh, as much as I would probably rather talk about Kingsman. <laughs> uh, did you you saw Death Wish? Right, you saw it this week. Did I ever? What was yeah. your What's your overall opinion of it? I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. to be honest. Yeah, I was laughing. I was so confused the entire time yeah. until the end when it said directed by Eli Roth. And I was like, "Yeah. Oh, now this all everything else fits. I I get it. I understand what was happening now, but before that moment I was so confused." It, it it's it's a movie rife with with poor decision making just across the board. Yes. From 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 the moment they said you know who's going to be great in this? Bruce Williams. He's <laughs> he's going to be great. I feel like Bruce Willis has been, you know the game Telephone? Where you, yeah. you you start with one phrase and you pass it down through like 20 people and at the end it's generally completely different. I feel like yeah. he's playing a game of Telephone with his character from Die Hard. Each movie is just one step away, getting further and further away until now we're at Death Wish, which is... Just this weird version, like this, like funhouse version of John McClane. That's an interesting way of looking at it. I, I, the the moment, like you know, the 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 movie opens up, right? Yeah. We, do we do do you do spoilers on here? Yeah, everything everything's free to talk about. My theory is, okay. if the if it's the title of the episode is the movie, spoilers are free reign, and then okay. I'll give spoiler alerts if we talk about something else. Like just from the get go. Oh, go on. Oh no, that's all I was saying. That's it. Just right in the beginning of the the movie, when the cop is driving his friend, his his partner who's been shot to the hospital. Yes. And it's it's like this is somewhat exciting. I you know this is fine. And they get in the hospital, and there's that really long take in the hospital of them bringing the friend in, and then they're like, "Go get the surgeon," and the camera goes in. And, and and then we see that Bruce Willis is a surgeon. I laughed. <laughs> I, I, he's. I don't know. I don't buy him at all as a surgeon. He's, I I hardly buy him as a person in this movie. He, yeah. 
And I came into this movie wanting one thing. I wanted to see Bruce Willis's shiny bald head get hit with some blood. That's what I wanted to see. <laughs> and it didn't happen. And I think I know why. I think, I think there was a scene where he'd get covered in blood. And, you know, Eli Roth tells him, okay, Bruce, the blood's going to hit you. And he just says, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to clean the, it's sticky. I don't want to do that. He, he definitely seems like kind of an old curmudgeon. Like, that's, that's something that Harrison Ford is kind of known for now. Like being difficult to work with and just kind of grumpy. At least Harrison performs, though. Yes. Bruce Willis is like the worst version of that. He is, he, he is snoozing through this movie. <laughs> is he not? Yeah, no, for sure. He, he, <laughs> he it's, it's really, it's a really poor performance. I was shocked. Like how, like, cause he's considered a great actor. And I, I don't really feel like he's been very good in anything for a very long time. For years. Yeah, it's been a real I think long time. The last one people would say he did well on was probably, uh, Looper. Right? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I disliked him in that, but that could be the, I, yeah. I, I had a real issue with the face prosthetics they put on Joseph Gordon Levitt. Oh, yeah. And so. I wasn't a fan. <laughs> I, I think I kind of put that on Bruce Willis. Like, why do you have to have such a stupid face that they had to do this to, Joseph Gordon Levitt. So that it might that be an unfair, <laughs> an unfair reason to dislike the movie. I wasn't a big fan of the movie myself. Yeah. Um, I thought the last half being on the farm was a little, uh, a little weak. Yeah. Yeah. It, it had a cool premise and I feel like a lot of movies will try to ride that out. That yeah. they'll take credit like, Oh, this is a cool premise and now we can slow it down and you, it, it doesn't really work that way. Like you can't just. Telekinesis? I don't know. Like, why? All right. Yeah. We're talking about the wrong movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, but yeah, so Death Wish, the whole story, I think we can sum up pretty quick. We don't really need to go through it scene by scene. Yeah. But, uh, he, he gets, his house gets broken into. His wife and daughter, who weren't supposed to be at the house, are at the house. Get, his wife gets murdered. Daughter goes into a coma. He decides yeah. that because the police aren't doing enough or aren't capable enough of catching who did it, he's going to bring justice into his own hands. There you go. That's yeah. the back of the box. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it is, it feels so full of political commentary, but it's not saying anything. I don't know if that's how you felt watching this. It felt like it was, the, the messages were so mixed because I don't think there was one. Oh. But it was really hard to follow. When I watch a movie, I just take, typically I'll take the movie at face value. Like I don't go digging for deeper meaning or what the message is, unless it's slapping me in the face, you know? So if there's like any metaphors or if, there's, if they're trying to get any messages across, yeah. I just ignore it completely because I, I, I really don't like that type of thing. Mm. You know, like I, I want to avoid politics. Yeah. At, at all costs, and I, there, you are right. I, now that I think about it, they're just they're talking about is he good or bad on the radio, and the movie never comes to a conclusion. Was he good or bad? And it doesn't like put it in your hands to make you decide is he good or bad. Yeah, it just yeah, that is um an interesting thought. Because like, have you ever seen Boondock Saints? Yeah, that's the one where Willem Dafoe uh, cross-dressed, right? Yes. Yes. He, yeah, I saw that. Uh, and so throughout that movie, you have a similar thing where they're interviewing people about, are the saints good? You know, and they 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 at least question the the value of it. And I feel like this movie tries to do a similar thing, but it doesn't it doesn't land. It doesn't it doesn't settle on any any point. It's just kind of like. Well, it worked, so it, it's do, fine. Do you think it was trying to find a point, or no? I don't. I, I felt that that was. What do you the, think its goal was? Just uh, to make an Eli Eli Roth movie. Here's the thing: I I haven't seen many of his movies, mm -hmm. but I know I haven't liked any of his movies. Yeah. Uh, so he did. Uh, what was it? Hostel. 
Um, oh, right. Hostel was not good. No, it's really bad. He did one of the Grindhouse movies, which I've only seen the end of. Oh, I actually like that one. That's okay. Planet Terror. He did right? Planet Terror? I thought he did Death Proof. No, no, no. Tarantino did Death Proof. Okay. Well, that one is bad. You know, I've, I've seen the end of Death Proof, and that was really bad. That's my second least favorite Tarantino. <laughs> okay. Um, Cabin Fever I never saw. Waste. Um, Waste of time. Yeah. So I, I don't you know. Hostel. Scroll through his filmography. Yeah. Hostel. Hostel is the one that I, I've seen and remember the best. And it's not fun. It's not a good movie. But the whole point is just to torture people. Yeah, but it doesn't even do that well. No. Like the Saw movies do it in a really fun way. Yeah. But well, not that. I, well, because, so with Eli Roth, the whole point is the spectacle of what happens. Like the whole point of Death Wish is to have a few cool murder scenes. That's Which it, did it, do you think it did? Not really. They were I thought, distracting go on. More, more than anything, I think. Um, especially like the guy who fell off the staircase and just like turned into Gumby. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, so like that actually was like almost identical. Sorry to cut you off. No, no, I watched no the babysitter a couple weeks ago and there's an, a scene where a guy falls off a staircase onto a trophy and it's like the exact same shot, exact same head crunch, but the guy in the babysitter lands on like a trophy and it goes through his neck at the same time. Gotcha. Maybe they just reuse hey. that, that dummy. But so like with Saw, right? It is, it's at least putting forward a question. Like, what would you do if you were in this situation? Would you be willing to chop off your own leg to survive? And so while you're watching the movie and this stuff is happening, even though it's, it's not, they're not great, right? They're, they're kind of cheaply made and pretty contrived and, you know, they're, they're just saw movies. They're, they're like you don't expect a lot from them. You yeah. at least you can at least put yourself into the character's shoes and like start to relate and question a little bit. With Hostel, you're just like, okay, I'm just watching someone get tortured, I'm watching, you know, like you're not you're not you're not relating to the person. You're not questioning like, oh, what would I do in this situation? Because it's just but there's nothing clever about its premise. Yeah. Which, which is what, what Saw has a nice gimmick to it. I wouldn't call it clever, but the deaths are clever and the, the way it's presented, it doesn't seem like it's just happening for gratuity's sake. Yeah. Where, where in Hostel, you know that whole movie is revolved around just torture for the sake of torture. Yeah. It's just it's like, to um, make people Martyrs. uncomfortable. Martyrs had a great premise for all of its gore. I never Did saw you see it. Martyrs? Mm-mm. Oh my god, Martyrs is great. Yeah. Yeah, I won't spoil it. All right. But it's got a really good reason for its over the top uh shock gore. Yeah. Yeah, like Rambo, right? Like it's like Rambo 4 is probably one of the most gory, violent action movies I can think of. Yeah. And, and if you're going to do it, you got to make it fun. Yeah. You, there's like Eli Roth doesn't do fun, does he? No, no. He I'm did. sorry, I keep cutting you. No, no, no worries. The, he's his concern is just that shock factor of when something happens. But I was never shocked. Well, yeah, I think it's I think it's gotten to the point where this stuff that he's doing is is kind of like a magic trick, and we've seen them all before. You know, like the idea, like a magic trick of you know sawing a woman in half. That's not impressive at this point, because how many times have you seen it? And yeah. all, all the stuff Eli Roth does in Death Wish is not, it's not like, it doesn't make you anxious. It doesn't make you nervous. You know exactly what's going to happen before it happens. They, yeah. they show you exactly what's happening. They like, they, it's, it's like worse than holding your hand through it. They're like force feeding you what's going to happen. There's zero nuance to this movie. Like when they're at the restaurant in the beginning of the movie and they're like, okay, we'll see you at the restaurant at eight o'clock on Wednesday. You see the, uh, the valet driver. He like pays attention. You're like, okay, well yeah. clearly this guy's up to no good. Then he goes and takes a picture of their home address. I was like, okay, uh, exactly. 
you know what's going to happen next. Like there's no, yeah. there's no questioning, no nuance to it, no nothing. Um, I, I have actually got something to say about that yeah, because yeah. I thought this whole time in the beginning of the movie that it was trying to frame this, the, like I, I was getting into a bit of mystery with the whole thing because it okay. felt like the movie was framing people up to potentially be the burglars, oh, right? Yeah. Cause it's uh-huh. the very beginning of the movie where the cop's partner dies mm-hmm. and, and the cop's like, what are you going to go save the animal that killed my partner? Right. And Bruce Willis yep. is like, yeah. So I thought, yeah, okay, the it. cop might want revenge. And then later on, there is the guy he, he, Bruce Willis had, uh, the guy at the park, at the kids' soccer game, got really mad at Bruce Willis. Yes. And they almost fought. Yep. And I thought, okay, maybe that guy gets drunk and gets a group of friends and, you know, it all goes wrong. And then there was, I wrote this down. Oh, and then they showed the valet driver take the picture. Mm-hmm. And I thought, that's so obvious. They're going to make it, like, they're going to have a twist where the valet driver was, like, taking the picture for some stupid reason, you know, like you just had a crush on the girl or something like that. Yeah. I thought they were gearing us up to to subvert us, to, yeah. to pull a twist. And nothing happened. No. All those things, other than the valet driver, he's the only person who comes back. Everything else is only there to establish Bruce Willis's character. And they hit you so hard over the head with the point they're trying to make. <laughs> I don't think, though, Bruce Willis had any, gave any character to the role. Well, that might be why they had to go so hard with that, that type of stuff. So you understood exactly who Bruce character, Bruce, Bruce character, Bruce Willis was supposed to be. Cause the idea was I, him being willing, him being a good doctor, being willing to save anyone, that life is precious no matter whose it is. And then the death of his wife and his, daughter getting sick or going into a coma is what pushes him past that where he decides, you know what? Not all life is important. I'm going to take life that is causing problems. And it didn't get that at all from the movie. No, they do. Yeah. That, I mean, that was the intention, but they fail, fail so hard at making that point. Like there's so many, there's so many interesting questions that you can have with this movie and they don't play with any of them. You could have a lot of tension too with with an old guy that's not experienced in combat. Oh, but he was so that, experienced in in this movie. He was a superhero. I, I couldn't believe. Yeah, well, like, he didn't even have to do anything. <laughs> the one the one scene to give the movie credit that I thought was pretty well shot was when he kills the was it the ice cream man? Yeah. When he walks up on the guys and he just like shoots the guy right in the chair, like that felt surprising you like that was yeah. the one moment that felt like oh that's not exactly how i thought that was going to go down yeah but, and then he walks away like assassin's creed yeah <laughs> but uh yeah let's go through let's go through his uh his murders that might be the best way to okay. ha- handle this movie so the first one right so mj which was the v- original valet driver gets shot at one point he gets his gun and his phone and finds out that, um, oh wait, does he get the gun from MJ or he just gets a phone from him? Oh, okay. No, no. First of all, he got the gun because he, he oh man, <laughs> he, he wanted to go, he wanted to get a gun. Yes. And I think he even says out loud, I, I got to get a gun. Right. And. Later that night, when he's on call at the hospital, a gun falls out of the patient's pocket. Yes. A patient that he has, and he just picks picks the gun up just it, that night. He kicks it under the bed, and I guess yeah. no one sees it. No one looks like... No one heard it. <laughs> it's just, he's able to sneak it out. Um, but before that, he goes to the gun, the gun store yeah. and is talking about buying a gun. And this was, this is one of the things that felt like a political statement that didn't have a statement because he was asking like, what's the process to get it? And she's like, Oh, it takes this long. Da 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 da. It takes, you know, whatever. 
uh, you have to pass this test and all this different stuff. But it's not hard. Don't worry. No one ever fails. Yeah. And it, it felt like I, it may just be because of everything going on in the States right now that that felt like a political statement. It just felt very out of place for not making a statement at that point, regardless of which side you want to go with. Like it, it just seemed, it seemed so strange to, to put that in there, have it so cartoony and yet not make a point with it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I just let that stuff pass over. Like yeah. Gun, gun control. Uh, just shut up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It's probably easier to enjoy movies that way. It isn't. No. Believe it or not. No. Still get overly critical. <laughs> get yelled at by my friends. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so he doesn't get a gun there. He gets a gun from someone who had been shot and somehow, Somehow the gun made it with him through the ambulance ride to the hospital, drops out of his pocket, and he gets it there. Uh, yeah, magically for Bruce Willis. And this first night, he goes out, and all I could think about the first when he goes out the first night, because he, he went out the night before and got jumped, right? Yeah. And he goes out with a gun now, and I was just thinking, I was like, he's just going to shoot the first person who looks at him weird. Like he, he seems so like if this was a real person, he seems so on edge and so jumpy. I was just like, he's just going to murder someone who doesn't deserve it. But thankfully he pulls up on a, uh, a carjacking and is able to shoot both the driver and the passenger, the, uh, the carjackers. Uh, but he tears up his hand from the gun slide. Okay. Is that what happened? Yes. I thought the car. Because it was not put together too well. I thought the car drove close past him and knocked the gun out of his hand. Yeah, so what what happened was the slide of the gun went back and, like, pinched his the the skin on his hand. And, like, Does that happen? I don't, I don't know. I've never heard of that. I've never of heard that. of that happening. Yeah, that was... I wasn't quite sure. Because the, uh, the guy from Breaking Bad, uh, Hank... Uh, I don't know his name in this. Oh movie. yeah, he he no, says he plays Hank in this in this movie as well. Oh, is it is just the same, same character? character? That's good. I like the it's continuity. Pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, he says like, oh yeah, we just need to find someone who's he's clearly not experienced with guns because he got that injury, and I I don't I I feel like that's not really a, an injury you can get. Like I I don't know. I feel like the gun would push your hand out of the way going back before it could pinch your hand coming back in. He so also it, had that wound for a solid couple weeks. Yes. And, and it didn't heal or anything. It just sat there gaping. Yeah, and he's a, a surgeon. Like, he's a doctor. Yeah. He definitely should have known how to take care of it. Exactly. <laughs> he just puts a Band-Aid on it <laughs> and some Neosporin. Um, but, yeah, so he gets recorded. Someone videotapes him murdering these two people. But thankfully for the movie, they don't show his face. Yeah, they missed it. And uh, he, they, what do they call him? The Grim Reaper. He, yeah, very clever. Yeah. He gets known as the Reaper. Uh, and people are, people are bringing up the point that is this right? But that's all they ever do, right? You have uh, a couple radio shows um, saying like, is this okay? Is this okay? But no one takes a stance. No one says, like, you shouldn't do this, or you should do this, or it's a good thing, or it's a bad thing. Like, it's just, I, I feel like the just, movie wasn't willing to make a point. They're just like, ah, whatever, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Do you think it was too afraid to make a point? I, I don't, I, just, I think they didn't care. I think their intention was to just make a cool murder movie, and everything else was kind of just window dressing that they overlooked. Okay. I, you know, they got Sway on there. You know, that's a real yeah. radio. Yeah. So is Man Cow. Man Cow. Oh, okay. It, both of them are, both of them are actual. I was surprised they didn't get Joe Rogan on there, but maybe he was busy filming that Bright. little slot he did for Bright. Yeah. <laughs> that movie is so You bad. read my mind. <laughs> hey, hey, Bright's great. What are you talking oh, about? Oh, no. I hope you don't mean I like, that. I mean it. 
Bright is one of the worst movies I've seen in a very long time. Now, Bright is is not good, but uh, it's better than Death Wish. I'll give it that. Oh man, is it? Yeah. I, the The first ten minutes of Bright made me shut it off for a week because it was so bad. Yeah. The first ten minutes the is first the best ten part of the of Death movie. Wish made me laugh. <laughs> the first ten minutes of Bright is the best part of Bright. Everything after that when he, it's when it gets really bad. When he hits the ferry with a shovel or something. Yeah, that was really bad. Oh man. Oh yeah. Okay, I don't want to talk about Bright. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about Death Wish. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yep. So he. I'm he, sorry. No, no, no worries. This, I mean, this is generally how it goes. We uh, we just get off in tangents all the time. Um. Okay. Good. So I do he that all he, with the time. He gets known as the Grim Reaper. Uh, hoodie wearing white guy who is killing bad guys. Basically how everyone refers to him. Um, yeah. his second, his second murder. Now, the first one, the first one didn't seem like it had a point, right? When he kills the carjackers. Also, it didn't feel, I thought he'd be traumatized after or have a revelation. Yeah. And yeah, he, he kind of started breathing heavy, and then they cut away from that, and it stopped happening. He, he, th- there were no consequences. He didn't seem traumatized or relieved by it. Like it didn't seem like this shook his shook him to the core because he's so used to saving people, and it also didn't seem like he didn't turn into Dexter. You know what I mean? Like he didn't turn into this like blood hungry murderer. He just yeah. he just seemed like I don't know, like. His reaction was the same as when he got into the spat with a guy at the soccer game. Like there was no, <laughs> there was no difference between the two. Both of his reaction was the same when he was watching his daughter in a coma get her get 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 a sponge bath to ACDC's Back in Black. <laughs> this, do you this, remember that? Uh, vaguely, I don't remember the ACDC. <laughs> I do remember when he walked in on his daughter in a sponge bath. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's so stupid. <laughs> but oh, yeah. we were we were laughing. At did you? Who'd you go with? Did you take your girlfriend? Yeah. Did she like it? We were both laughing. No one else in the theater was laughing, <laughs> so we had to keep it to ourselves. There were moments when Bruce Willis genuinely reminded us of Neil Breen. Do you know who Neil Breen is? No. Oh my God, he 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 he's a mastermind. He's uh. He, he, he directs, he, okay, he writes, edits, directs, produces, caters, lights, casts, all his own movies. Okay. He's made four movies so far. His fifth one's coming out. Nice. They, they are so bad. (laughs) They, they are, Fateful Findings is the funniest movie I have seen in my life. I've never laughed so hard. It's better than The Room? I, it's on par. I think Fateful Findings has some moments that top the room. Wow. Um, but, and it's free on YouTube too, so. Alright. If anybody wants to watch Fateful Findings by Neil Breen, (laughs) get a drink, get a friend, you won't be sorry. But Bruce Willis's acting was, was as bad as Neil Breen's. It was, it's shocking how bad it was. Like, it, it's not even that he's necessarily a bad actor. He just could not care. Like, he seemed like, I don't want to invest any energy into this. I will say your words. I will be on camera. We're doing this all in one take, and I'm getting out of here in a week. Like, I'm going, yeah. <laughs> you know, that seemed to be his whole attitude. Like, Vincent D'Onofrio, I felt like, did a decent job in this movie. Yeah, he did. But I didn't realize that at the time because Bruce Willis was just making everything, dragging it all down. Yeah. Well, yeah. Vinny D, he did do pretty good. He, he's, he's solid almost every single time. I can't think of anything yeah. that he's in that was not good. At, at least his performance. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So his second murder is, who does he go after next? It's, uh, Ice Cream Man. Ice Cream Man? Candy yeah. Man? Ice Cream Man. Ice Cream Man. Unrelated to 
his family. Yeah, so he's he's helping a kid who... All right, so he, he's checking on a kid who had got shot in the leg. And the kid was like, oh, the, the ice cream man did this because <laughs> do, I was Do you remember how he sweet-talked the kid into giving him the, the info? What did he say? He said... He just started talking about his favorite basketball player. Oh, and yeah. And then the kid sp- spilled his guts. Yeah. He was talking yeah. about... Uh, he's like, oh, you're a LeBron fan? I've always been more yeah. of a Jordan guy. He's... LeBron might he be better, but... through the air. He's so, so majestic in the sky. <laughs> it's so dumb. You remember this? Yeah, yeah. It's the second It's the second time that uh, Michael Jordan came up in this movie. The first time was with uh, the uh, the valet driver. Because he had MJ tattooed on his arm. And he's like, oh, you're a Michael Jordan fan? And the guy's like, no, that's just my initials. I was like, oh, Okay. <laughs> He's just got an obsession. <laughs> Michael <laughs> Jordan. That's the character's quirk. That's why he's bald. Yeah. Yeah. That's he the, wants to that's look the like... backstory. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so he goes, the, the kid is like, the candy man, or the ice cream man, won't let me walk to school if I don't work for him. He said, if I do it again, he's going to shoot me in the head. Which is intense. Yeah. This kid is like, Eight years old. Yeah. And I feel like drug dealers have a bit more, I don't know, standards, <laughs> class maybe. Than... A little bit, a, a better way of going about uh, kids. Yeah. Not 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 shooting kids in the head. Yeah, every yeah. Day. Yeah, for walking to school. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Uh, so he goes, and again, this is, this is the one moment that was... Not shocking, but unexpected, which is nice. Kind of like a refreshing moment in this movie when everything else is so just in your face. Uh, he walks up and shoots him and just walks away. Um, yeah. And then that's the next is MJ shows up. That's why he remembers him, finds his phone and finds out that he had taken a picture of his home address and is the reason why uh, his family got attacked. And I thought he was going to kill MJ as a surgeon. I thought he was going to like help perform the operation and like, you know, slip (laughs) and uh, just kill him on the operating table. Kill who? The uh, valet driver. Okay. Cause he, I don't know if you remember, but he gets shot at one point and comes in. And as a patient, and that's when oh, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he gets his phone. Um, maybe he dies before he has a chance. But I, I just thought that would have been an interesting step for his character, for Bruce Willis's character, to as the because he he seems like he's fragmented his personality into this vigilante and a surgeon. And I felt like if he would have, you know, acted as a surgeon and been the vigilante, it would have been kind of an interesting choice. Like you would have seen the questioning going on in his head and stuff, but they didn't. They didn't do any of that. Like see him have to bring keep the guy alive, or kill him intentionally. Yeah, the guy just kind of died on the bed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. But anyways, that would have made it a better movie, and that's not what their intention was. So. <laughs> I just uh, looked up the uh, writers. Yes. For the movie. And they're they're. Uh, Tra- their filmography is pretty bad. I believe it. Nothing you've heard of, really. Um, Death Sentence, the the Kevin Bacon movie. No idea. Okay. Uh, it's good that death. Oh, is in a the couple title, episodes though. of the Blacklist. Okay. The Fourth Kind. Yep. Uh, Boys Up unauthorized S- smoke and aces too okay nothing but tr- trash yeah oh stretch oh he's producer of stretch all right yeah so death wish is actually a remake yeah um, of the one with bronson right? yeah i've never seen the original i have to assume it's better but i have no idea i'd assume the gore effects are pretty good in the original or in this one in the original yeah, probably. For and this the time. one, they were fine, but they didn't like when the guy's head got smushed by the car. That was okay. Yeah, 
but I, you know, it didn't it didn't satiate my bloodlust. <laughs> well, it also you knew exactly what was going to happen the entire time, and it's also it was deflated by his dumb joke of he's like you're not going to kill me. He's like no, Jack is, and then he pulls the Jack out from under the car, and the car falls on top of the guy. Yep. And so it like really just ruins that whole moment. One, because you know exactly what's about to happen, and two, because it's just a dumb joke. Here's my question to you. Yes. Who do you think could play a better... Who do you think should have taken this role? Which actor should Um, have played Bruce Willis' part? So it's got to be someone somewhat older. Yeah. Michael B. Jordan. Or just Michael Jordan. That would have been better. Michael. That would have been, yeah, that, that's what the writers wanted. Um, Michael B. Jordan? No, that was Isn't just a he joke. The guy that's the guy that from Black like Panther. Nick Cannon? Sort yeah. of, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think you'd want someone who seems softer than Bruce Willis. Yeah. Bruce Willis seems kind of, um, I don't know, grizzled. That doesn't feel like the right word, but do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think nobody else out there could do it better than Brian Cranston. I think he would yeah. nail it. Yeah, that would have been a really good choice. Uh, or or a younger De Niro could do it. Yeah. I don't know if I see De Niro as a surgeon, really. No. But I thought it'd be fun if, if they had Joe Pesci as the... <laughs> Even Vincent D'Onofrio. Vincent D'Onofrio would have been much better. Oh, yeah. As the, he could uh, pull that off. The lead. Um, yeah. But Bruce Willis needed the money for, I don't know, his, uh, some, some, some for, for his hospital appointments. Well, that, I, I mean, that's the, that's the sad thing about movies now is I'm sure a ton more people saw this movie because Bruce Willis was in it. Yeah. You know, like if it wasn't Bruce Willis, if it, you know, say it was Vincent D'Onofrio or whoever, you know, Brian Cranston might have pulled people in, but still not, yeah. not the same way Bruce Willis would. And so they're willing to make a, a worse, you know, a lesser movie to make more money. And at some point that, that's gotta stop, right? Like at, at some point people are just gonna stop trusting movies based on the actors. No. It's been going on since before we were born. I know, but like I, I gotta imagine that it, that good faith is gonna run out at some point. Do you think people, as we continue evolving, if you will, are just gonna get smarter? No, at this point, I think it's just gonna get worse. They're <laughs> gonna keep falling for it. It's gonna, it's gonna they're, turn into idiot, idiocracy. They're going and watching the the same superhero movie f- six times a year. Oh man, I mean, I'm it, so it's sick stuff. of sick of mo- superhero movies. Yeah, me I, too. I can't. The, they're, they're not good anymore. They're not fun. They're not exciting. And the CGI, like watching the two CGI characters fight, is not entertaining. Especially when you have things like video games, where you can at least control I one of them. Homecoming was fun. That's a good. Homecoming was really good. Yeah. And um, yeah, I've given up completely giving any sort of critical thought to the. Marvel movies because it just gets me into trouble. Yeah. It just gets you into conversations. It's like talking politics with people. It's like, <laughs> no, it's not worth no it. religion, politics, or Marvel movies at the dinner table. Yeah. Now, now Star Wars too, because Last Jedi was so polarizing. Yeah. Can't talk about that. But you have to. Everyone has to. You, yeah. you have to see it. You have to talk about it and you have to give your opinion. That's what movies are for now. Which is ironic because I mean I do a podcast that is basically that, but but I, I love movies. So do I. I just haven't seen a good one for a long time, which is the worst part. It's uh yeah I mean it's sad mm-hmm. how I I think uh, I'm a big believer in Sturgeon's law, which is that ninety percent of everything is terrible. Yeah, I, I think you got to bump it up to ninety eight percent or ninety nine. For for movies and TV today, because it is just a landfill. 
Yeah, well, the ones that you're aware of that are coming out that, you know, you see all these ads for and, you know, you hear about and all this excitement building for, those are, it's pretty safe to say, are not going to live up to the expectation and it's probably not even going to be that good. Yeah. Like people, the, I, I, you say that, but people don't seem to care. Like, people love Black Panther to death. Yeah. And well, it's, I, it's fine. Yeah. I, I didn't love it. I thought it was fun. But as soon as you put a microscope up to the movie and examine it, it falls apart. Yes. Well, I think, I think partly with Black Panther, people are afraid to not like it because Oh, because then you're racist. Then you're racist. Right. And uh, so I think people like it less than they say they like it. But even still, I think people enjoy things that they... The other people that well, they think they need to enjoy. Well, no, that they, they can just kind of turn their brains off and uh, just absorb it. And... I, I don't understand that. No. I, I, I get it to a degree... If, if I'm spending money on a movie and I'm spending an hour and a half of my life on this movie, it had better damn well be good. Yeah. That's – especially if you've had a long, terrible uh, week at work and you're like, I need a movie. I, it better be good. Yeah. That's all I got to say. Yeah. If you're, if you're going to devote, I mean, even just your attention to something for so long – it should be worth that time. It should be worth that investment. And yeah. for most people, they, that's not the concern. Um, you know, I think they just kind of like, I just want to have fun, which is perfectly fine. Like, I wish I was more like that. I wish I could just be like, you know what? I just want to enjoy things. That seems like a yeah. much easier way to go about life. But, uh, I know I want to, I want to have a good story. I want to have something I can like, chew on and think about and consider and like, you know, have things kind of, you know, good art is supposed to make you question reality and movies should be art. And they're just, they're, they're just fast food art. You know what I mean? Like they're just, it's just McDonald's over and over. It's not good. It's not tasty. It's just easily, easy to consume and easy to obtain. And that's uh, a good comparison. I like that. And so, but yeah, like Black Panther, like you watch the action scenes in that, you can tell what's going on, but you don't get to it's see. It's difficult to keep up. Yeah, you don't get to see it, what's happening. Like you go and watch movies like The Raid and you get to watch oh, this, you know, showcase of skill and you're like, okay, yeah, this makes sense why you would devote 10 minutes to this fight scene because what the you're raid, doing is impressive. Oh, I'm sorry. The Raid has yet to be topped. Those two movies pinnacle of action uh the church scene in kingsman yeah is is about on that level but god yeah people love to say oh john wick john wick's the best i i it's the raid far and just without question the raid is yeah yeah and, and how old is that movie that came out in 2011 maybe i don't know 2012 like it sounds right it's yet to be topped well, i don't think the 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 way they made it, the showcase of the martial art was the focus. Because the story is kind of weird, right? Oh, yeah. You, you break down the raid story and it's like, this is I appreciate it that they goofy. didn't but that try wasn't, to trick you. Yeah. Like, they, they they told you in the beginning of the movie that that cop is a crooked cop. Mm. And so, like, the fact that they tell you the twist before the twist happens, I thought that was respectful to the audience. Yeah. Like, they weren't trying to... You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when you compare the raid with John Wick, right? They both, they both have action kind of as the, the, um, focus, the focal point. Yeah. But the raid doesn't take its world very serious. It like is willing to admit, yeah, this is all ridiculous, but it's here to serve a point. John Wick takes its world very serious. And it, it's like, no, no, this is ridiculous, guys. Like, your whole world that you built is goofy. Don't try to make me believe that it's it's earnest. And I think that's that's my issue between the two. I like both. Can't, 
But it uh, can't even be Ernest because Jim Varney's dead, right? <laughs> it took me a minute to understand what you're saying. No one else will. That's fine. That's all right. <laughs> it was bad anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Death Wish. He goes and kills a bunch more people. A guy almost shoots him in the head and gets hit in the head with a bowling ball, which was the worst oh. part of this whole movie. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, the Home Alone moment. Yeah. And it, yeah. It wasn't, it was like a completely luck. And it was just like, <laughs> really? Like you could. It didn't even, like you said, it doesn't surprise you. You know it's gonna happen. You the, know exactly when it's gonna happen. It doesn't like. It, they build it up for a minute. He, he falls yeah. into the shelf, bumps it. You see the bowling ball get knocked off its little stand and is rolling down the shelf. And the guy, the bad guy is walking over with a gun about to shoot him. You're like, <laughs> Oh, I wonder how he's going to get out of this. I wish, yeah. I wish the gun would have jammed and then Bruce Willis stab the guy and then get up and the bowling ball just never show back up again. Just like. Just like a yeah. red herring type of thing. Like, oh, the that, bowling ball's going to get him, but nope. It, it drops on his head and knocks him out. That movie had a couple red herrings, now that you mention it. I, I wrote one down. Because, uh... Um... Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. When they were eating lunch, with when everybody was alive... Yes. Uh, it, they talk. They make a great effort to let the audience know... That Bruce Willis's daughter has like a black belt in karate or something. Oh, Krav Maga, yeah. So during that scene, I'm like rolling my eyes, going, "Okay, so in the climax of the movie, she's gonna have to step up to the plate and fight a guy." And it didn't even ha- that didn't even happen. Yeah. That whole lunch scene just doesn't even matter. No, she definitely doesn't seem like she's good at Krav Maga when she because uh, she she does fight him at one point, but it doesn't seem like. She knows anything that she's doing. Yeah, she threw, or the mom threw boiling water. Yeah, so she grabbed the knife. The daughter grabbed the knife and slit the guy's face and tried running out to the window, I think. And the mom threw boiling water on the guy. And then the guy was like, you know what, forget it, and just shot them both. Did you notice that there were some scenes where Bruce Willis was like running through the night, but... You can't see Bruce Willis's face. Like, he's just jogging. But it's clearly not Bruce Willis jogging, because he doesn't want to. It's clearly, like, a a stunt double or something, just running through the night with a hoodie on. <laughs> Did you catch that? I, I didn't pay attention to that, no. That's, it doesn't surprise me. That's what me. I look at. It's better... Look for the politics. I'll look for the dumb, the dumb bull <laughs> in the back. It's better than uh, in Taken. That's always that meme of... Uh, Oh, when he's it, hopping over the fence. Hopping over the fence and it cuts 45 times. Yeah. Like, well, at least Liam Neeson's actually doing it. But the thing is, they chose to put that fence there. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a, that was a direct choice by the filmmakers. They're like, you know what would be cool? If you hop over this fence and it's like, hey, uh, I can't hop over a fence, guys. That, that, that will really hurt me. And they're like, don't worry. We got this. We got it. And then he's like, take one step, cut. And we'll reposition, take another step, cut. All right, get the step ladder, cut. All right, hop up here, cut. Get the harness, all right, cut. Like, it's so ridiculous. They could have just taken the fence out, not used that that scene, like that spot, and what? just have him run through an alley. No, no, you got to have the fence ads. Does it? Adds it adds so much. It's, uh, yeah. It's so much character development going on. It, uh, yeah, over the fence climb. Bruce Willis does pay homage to that by jumping over a fence in this movie. I assume he that's does what jump it was over a fence. I assumed it was but, related. But that's not Bruce Willis jumping over the fence. It's a stunt <laughs> double. It's a different guy. For, I promise you. I promise you. <laughs> well, I've run out of things to say about this movie. I don't know about you, but um, I I just we, we might as well wrap up the ending where uh yeah. So he, first, wait, okay. I thought I just can't get over that scene where it was the montage of him learning how to shoot. Yeah. In and, um, ACDC's Back in Black, I believe is the name of the song. Okay. It was playing. As this montage went on, the, the, the 
the editing of the montage didn't match up with the music, which <laughs> I thought was a missed opportunity. But it has, it's playing this song and he's shooting a, a sign, learning how to get better aim. And then it cuts to him in the hospital, like given bedside manner to s- some kid, you know, some parents whose kid died. Yeah. And it's still playing this fun, upbeat song. <laughs> and it ends with him looking at his daughter in a coma, getting a sponge bath by a nurse. Yeah. And I, I, that really tickled me. <laughs> and it, that's movie- what I take away from the movie is that scene. Yeah. It's very tonally off. It, it <laughs> yeah, doesn't, it, was- it doesn't know what it's doing. It like, I, I legitimately, I just feel like Eli Roth's intention was to have the few murder scenes and that he's just like, whatever you guys want to do, you know, like just fill it in. I don't care. I'm going to focus on yeah. these few things. You guys can take care of the rest. Okay, so his his daughter wakes up, and he takes his daughter home. By the way, when they showed that infomercial, you knew, right? You knew that that table with the gun in it would come back later. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. You, it was so obvious, slapping you in the face. So he gets his... Am I taking over now? No, yeah, go ahead. The movie? Yeah. He gets his daughter back home. Buys a gun from Bethany's, uh, Bethany's gun house. <laughs> and the guys come to, uh, kill him and his daughter. And Bruce Willis accidentally kills one of them through, uh, Home Alone Rube Goldberg with the bowling ball. No, that was and- in a different scene. That was, uh, that was at the, uh, the bar, the bowling oh. ball. Okay, I'm getting it mixed up. So, uh, they go down to Bruce Willis's basement, yeah. and that's where the guy's hiding, and, and Bruce Willis kicks the table open and grabs the gun from the infomercial and, and shoots the guy. And then uh, I did really like the ending, where he's talking to Hank from Breaking Bad. Yeah, I hated this, by the way. I hated every <laughs> so- moment of this part. <laughs> it felt like the ending of an 80s sitcom. Yeah. Where, yeah, where, where Bruce Willis... Ed, okay, first of all, the detective, we didn't even talk about it, Hank from Breaking Bad, oh, yeah. is so dead set on catching the Grim Reaper yep. through the whole movie. He wants him behind bars so bad. This is his life. He he wants to get him, right? He wants to prove to the boys in the precinct that he's got what it takes. But... Then he he gets to Bruce Willis's house, and and what does he say? I wrote down some of this. So he he so said they knew he said, you don't have a Glock, right? Yeah, yeah. So he they knew that the hand injury, uh, the Grim Reaper had a hand injury and a shoulder injury, and so Hank is asking Bruce Willis. He's like, hey, so your your theory or your story is your hand injury and your shoulder injury, which are almost completely healed happened tonight and bruce willis is like yep that's my story and he's just like all right well when did you get your guns and he's like oh i bought them the day my daughter came home it's like well did you have any other guns it's like i used to have a glock did you get rid of it <laughs> yep is it ever coming back nope all right so clearly they both admitted to each other we know but what's going says- on Go ahead. It's what he says after that. It, he says it with a smile and, and as if there's a live studio audience watching just <laughs> off camera. Because he says, stick to saving lives. Oh, yeah. Because you're good at it. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> they both, they both have admitted to each other. We, I admit I'm the Grim Reaper and I know you know that I am the Grim Reaper. But you're not going to yeah. do anything about it because you know that I did the right thing. But that, that, that point is never clarified. Well, well, plus the, the character, Hank, never had that moment. Like, like, he, he, he never had that moment where he realizes that he, maybe he should let Bruce Willis go. Mm-mm. You know, maybe the, the Grim Reaper is doing the city a favor. He, he just wants him, one dimensionally, he wants to take him down. And then when he's faced 
with the fact that Bruce Willis is the Grim Reaper, he he just he just does nothing. Yeah, which is baffling. Yeah, it's really dumb. <laughs> and that's the movie, and that's the end. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, there was some sequel bait, I think. Yeah, when he's walking down the street and the kid, what's he? He like steals a purse. Uh, yeah, I think so. A suitcase or something. Bruce Willis points his finger guns at him and shoots him with his finger gun. Yeah. And, and could you imagine if someone did that to you in real life? Someone yelled at you, "Hey!" and then finger gun shot you in the street. Yeah, that would be a crazy person. Yeah, why would he do that? He, he stood in the middle of the street. Too. Yeah, blocking traffic yeah. and yelling. So people are looking at him, and he finger gun yeah. shoots this kid who's stealing. But what happens after that? Because it cuts as soon as he pulls the fake trigger. I assume a semi-truck runs him over. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> it just, boom, and he's dead. I just imagine him just walking away, all flaccid, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like you know what, what happens after that it just doesn't make any sense no why anybody would do that that isn't homeless <laughs> <laughs> oh this movie this movie is not good i do not recommend seeing it i i think that it has some comedic value i can definitely see a, a yms or ralph the movie maker making a really funny video about it yeah but you should steer clear. If you have any intention of seeing this movie, you shouldn't see it. No. Yeah. It's definitely it's it's, bad. It's not worth, like, like you're saying, you could get everything from a YouTube video. Like, you do not need to see this movie. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Wait, so you wait want, for a highlight reel <laughs> on YouTube. Do you want to tell me about your YouTube channel again? Yeah. It's called Ren's Reviews. That's Ren's with two N's. Your favorite little boy in the whole wide world. And that's me. And I do heavily edited, uh, mostly heavily researched, uh, analytical comedic videos about video games, movies, and TV shows in that order. It's a fun time. The kids love it. They're, they're, it's a laugh a minute over there. I did, I, I did time it and that's, it's pretty accurate. Yeah, thank there, you. There's a couple of times it was coming in at 61 seconds, but, you know. Make sure, I make sure to get it in. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun, it's a fun place to, to be. Yeah, no, yeah, and, your channel's uh, great. Thank you. It's better than nitpicks, I'll tell you that. Oh, for sure. Plus, you don't, you don't speak with that weird accent. Yeah, you can understand what I'm saying. None of that fluff. Oh, is that, is, he sounds like a mongoloid. <laughs> None of that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you guys can follow us at I Seen That Pod over on Twitter. And Solid or Ace or Ren's Reviews on Twitter. Cool, man. Oh, and twitch.tv slash Ren's Reviews. Awesome. And facebook.com slash Ren's Reviews. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut me talking. And and MySpace. What's your MySpace? Do you have a dot friend's com slash Ren's reviews? Do you have a friend's store? Make sure to check out my Yelp page. Yelp.com slash slash Ren's reviews. I'm disappointed you don't have a friend's store. I uh a LinkedIn I account at least? I have one for the for the gag. I do actually have a LinkedIn. I don't really know what that does it. anymore. I keep getting... I don't know either. I get invites from people all the time for LinkedIn, and I'm just like, why? What do I need this yeah. for? Carol from corporate wants to be your friend. <laughs> okay? What does that mean? All right. I get that, too. How uh, do you end these? Real snappy? Yeah, well, that was it. Do you at the end? No, I was already okay. done. <laughs>